So, patch notes. Weren't expecting them, but... Something. <laughs> Here they are. Uh, so the knight uh, added an ability to manually swap between guards, right? Each guard has spe uh, a speciality. So it added the ability to choose between the right guard for your situation. This will provide a nice boost in power and quality of life. Okay. Patrol paths must be at least 10 meters in length. Which uh, obviously is a nerf, right? Uh... Added a multiplier to guard hunt time based on path length. Longer paths increase hunt time up to a maximum of 1.5 times the normal duration. I wish they could put like, you know, what's, what we usually do with the add-on and what that would be like in comparison because this stuff just gets so hard to kind of compare. Uh, do you guys know um, with like, I think it was Map of the Realm, was it? I can't remember. Um... Do you know, like, what it was? Like, duration time? How much more was it? If anyone knows. <laughs> w, Larry changes. They say some durations later in the text. Right, okay, well, I don't know what that means then. So one time, 1 1.5 times, is that better or worse than what we used to have? I don't know. Uh, when the knight is within 8 meters of his guard, the guard hunt timer depletes faster. Wow. Okay. That's a huge nerf, right? <laughs> Three times faster. So when he, when he uses his units... As they're meant to be used, at least currently, he gets hurt for it. Right. Dropping a guard at your feet in a loop is often the best choice, but leaves little counterplay. Run to the next pallet. It works with most killers as well. Uh, for the survivor at low level, um, we've added incentives for longer paths and improved counterplay. When, survive, or when someone is being chased by both the knight and his guard, that's insane. So even when you're chasing with knight and the guard and the survivor has not shift W'd and they've stayed at the same loop, they still might be able to fuck you. That's what I'm getting from that. Okay. Uh, so when the survivor makes the worst decision possible, you're still not 100% in advantage. Cool. Um... Reduce the Sony Fixer's hunt time to 12 seconds was 24. Okay. Interesting. So, super low hunt time, which won't do anything. Wait. And if you're near him, it's three times worse. So he hunts for four seconds. Are they being serious? If you put a if you put a certain effects out, it hunts for four seconds. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess you just use them to break pallets. The jailer's hunt time is twenty four seconds. Was twelve, uh, so that goes down to what is that? Eight seconds. Yeah. So eight seconds on the jailer if you're close to him. Um. The Cernifax has spawn, a banner spawn is now five seconds was 10 seconds. That's bad. That means that they can get to it easier. This is like a huge night nerf. And the jailer's banner spawn is to 10 seconds was five seconds. Okay. So they've just, they've swapped Cernifax and jailer around for some reason. The Cern um the Cern effects was previously the best at both breaking things and keeping survivors occupied, making the best choice for multiple scenarios. We swapped these hunt times and their associated banner spawn times around, making the jail of the specialist for trolling. Yeah, so basically you're just gonna use Cern effects to break pallets, that's it. Uh and then you're gonna swap to jailer for the the hunt stuff. Okay. Uh Yeah, you do not want to use Sony Facts or anything other than just breaking pallets. Okay. Well, fair enough. 
Uh, decrease the sonar factor's breaking time to 1.8 seconds was 2 seconds. Okay, that's good. The assassin breaking time was 5 seconds was 6, don't matter. Uh, jailer's breaking time was 5 seconds was 6, don't matter. Uh, increase the sonar factor's detection range to 10 meters was 8. 10, 8, 16, 14. Right. So, what's the uh, what's the assassin's hunt time? Does anyone know? Detection range. No, it's buffed. Buffed. Night's unbeatable at low MMR, is it? Wow, I didn't even know that. Is Knight like classed as like an S tier killer at low level? Assassin's Hunt is 12 seconds. <sighs> they didn't mention that, did they? So so when you bring out the assassin and you're stood with him to try and get them at somewhere, he's out for four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to change that. That's ridiculous numbers. Four seconds? <laughs> um, okay. And they've updated various add-ons, so who knows what, what uh, nerfs they've done to them. Because, uh, you know, technically they've, you know, buffed here, right? They've buffed that, buff, buffed the, um, the detection range. That's probably going to be a nerf to the um, detection range add-on. I can't remember what it's called, though. Was it Map of the Realm? I can't remember what the detection range one were, but that'll probably get nerfed. Uh, because this got buffed. Usually what happens. If they buff something at base, they'll nerf the add-on to it. Um, usually. So the Map of the Realm and Pillage Meat were fan favorite add-ons. So we incorporated some of the... Oh, sorry, it is Map of the Realm. Map of the Realm and Pillage Meat. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we reviewed many of the Knight's nice add-ons uh, to bring the strongest and weakest add-ons closer together. So basically what they mean by that is like... Uh, these two are definitely getting nerfed because they've been added to base. Um, I don't know how much they've been added to base. I don't know Knight enough to know exactly these seconds and everything. And they don't compare, so you can get an idea. Like, what they, what they would do if they actually wanted people to know exactly what they're doing, they'd say, like, um, the detection range is uh, 10 meters now. At base, it was 8. But with Map of the Realm, I think it was, I can't remember, uh, it was this. So then you see what it's changed from from the add-on, right? They'd do that if they cared to uh, to make it more obvious for you, but they don't. Uh, okay, cool. So, Knight... I genuinely don't know what you do with him, actually. So, let, let's try and figure it out. Is Knight just use Cernifax to break pallets over and over again? And that's pretty much the gameplay. And then... Whenever you do want to use the other unit, you don't actually want to be with that unit. You just, you you use it to, like, waste someone's time. Is that it? So you, you use, in chase, you just use Cernifax, Cernifax, Cernifax. And then the other two, I don't know why you'd use one over the other, I'm not sure. Um, You use them just to, like, chase and keep someone off on a gen or something. Is that it? You send them to gens, you know they're working on. Yeah. Assassin's bearing hunt jail is better for area denial. Right. They can just shift W it though. Um He just looks like he's just been like simplified as fuck. He's just there's not too much to him other than Cernifax, break pallet, jailer, or assassin, put on someone to get away from a gen. While you follow this other person. The issue is if you do that. Then you can't get Cernifax for breaking the pallet. You're just a mouse one. Why have they still got the banner spawn? If they've made it where. He's pretty much can't get you his units anymore. I thought that with the counterplay. Go into the banner. Did people not understand that? Like the big counterplay against Knight. Were... Shift W when you think he's trying to spawn something. Or try and rotate back to the banner. So work out a path in where you can get back to the banner. Okay, whatever. Um, Singularity. 
<clears throat> Taking control of a biopod will now cause it to aim at the nearest survivor within line of sight. What? Dude, they're proper just making stuff brain dead. They're just over, like, they're, me they're making stuff proper simple with only, like, What negative is going to happen because of that? So you just go straight on that and it gives you aimbot. After 0 0.25 seconds, targeting progress now decays over the next 0 0.5 seconds. Right, so they have more time to, to hide from it. So they've made it easier, but they've also made it weaker, right? So usually it would um, target at a certain speed, right? Um, but you would need to actually aim it. But now it just auto-aims, but... So you don't really have any control over this. It's, it's survivors who have control, right? You, you go on to it. It does it all automatically. Uh, and they have time to get away from it to um, to see them, correct? That's what I get from it. Uh, when controlling a biopod, survivors now only glow if they can be targeted. Yeah, so that's that's just linked to that. So do you even do you even move this shit anymore? I don't I don't understand that how that's going to work. It feels like this is for pads, by the way. It feels like they're thinking about this for for uh, console. Uh, decrease biopod targeting cooldown after slipstreaming a survivor to three seconds was 3.5. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. It's a bit of a buff. Improved UI when using biopods and when shooting with the killer. So the singularity can be hard to learn, but deadly when mastered. Mm, don't know about that. I wonder what they're going to do to his add-on. That's going to be interesting. So we've made some adjustments uh, to make talking survivors with biopod easier. It's not really easier. It's just like literally brain dead, isn't it? It does it for you. These changes won't have significant effect on those who already mastered the singularity. I mean, they will because you've nerfed them here. So they will. We are this nerf, yeah, but you, you've literally nerfed them. So, of course, that's going to... They're going to feel that. Um... Adding the ability to destroy the currently controlled biopod. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's quite good. The killer can now hear audio by default when controlling a biopod. That could be quite strong. Some quality of life improvements. Uh, biopods now have audio without needing an add-on. Uh, you can now destroy a biopod from distance as long as it's not disabled. Oh. Oh. So you only can destroy it if it's not disabled. Interesting. Okay. Um, the killer now receives killer instinct when a survivor is slipstreamed. Okay. The last controlled by a pod has its all revealed. A yellow for 10 seconds was 5 seconds. Sure. You know, they didn't need to do all this. They could have just had it where when you have a biopod and it's faced in a certain way, once you go out of that biopod, no matter where you were looking, it goes back to that position. The confusing thing with Singularity, in my opinion, is say you're looking here and then you look around and then you want to go to another biopod. You look at that biopod and you shoot at it and then that biopod's looking here and then you look around and you find someone there and then you go out. When you go out, the second one's going to be looking there and the first one's going to be looking there. If they just reset back to their positions, it won't be as confusing. But it's because the positions keep changing. That's why it's confusing, in my opinion. This auto-aim shit is just brain dead as fuck. But whatever. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, this this won't really do much, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, 10 seconds. Switching between biopods and singularity can, disor uh, can be disorientating. It's because you keep switching... The view of them, obviously. Like, literally what I just explained. So we made some changes to help players uh, get their bearings. It's still going to be weird. You're making a camera, which is looking at a door, look at a fucking wall randomly the next time you go into it. Of course you're going to be confused. 
Like, uh, anyway, um, the singularity gains three percent haste while in overclock mode. What did um, what did the other thing do? Was it three percent or was it five? Five. So a nerfed version. So they're gonna get rid of that add-on. So you're technically gonna have you're gonna have it at base, but it's gonna be nerfed. Overclock duration no longer scales with the number of slip streamed survivors. I actually didn't know that. Did you know that? <laughs> I did not know overclock's duration was linked to slipstream survivors. <laughs> I can't remember when they told me that. <laughs> it's probably somewhere, but I can't fucking remember that at all. Fucking hell. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it was one second per survivor. Fucking hell. No, I didn't know that. I probably I might have at one point, but I definitely forgot it. Interesting. Uh, increased overclock base duration to 5.7 seconds, so one second more. Stuns caused by perks such as head on blast mine during overclock will now cause overheat. The fuck is overheat? Oh no, what is this? Overheat. Head on blast mine. But it's only by perks. The Soma family photo add-on was much loved. And it weren't really loved. It was used because we were literally talking about this today. Um, like literally an hour ago. Saying that it's not it's not really loved. It's like ne like necessary. So we've added part of its specs to base kit to simplify overclock. Uh, we've removed the scaling duration and bumped up the time to 5.7 seconds. So you are... Go they're going to get rid of that add-on. You're not going to be able to get 5% anymore. It's only going to be 3%, but you get it longer. So, make it that what you will, I guess. Um, added an aim assist effect to shooting a slipstream survivor as well. Are they just designing this game a console now or something? Increased an aim assist when creating biopods. This is weird. So, this, this is going to feel well weird on mouse. So, you go to camera and it auto-aims at them. And then when you aim towards them, it auto-aims at them. Are they going to do this to Death Slinger, do you think? Um... When attempting to teleport to a survivor or place a biopod, a slight change could cause your shot to miss or become an invalid spot for a biopod, causing it to do nothing. We've improved the, improved the aim assist to linger slightly longer on the last valid place or slipstream survivor. Passive imprinting at supply cases is now limited to 97%. The remaining progress must be done manually by survivor. Okay, that's not a bad change. Uh, supply cases that have reached the passive printing limit uh, now have their auras revealed in yellow. Okay. That's why they had to do it then. Because that would be super, super strong. That's why they had to put the 97%. Seeing all of the cases wherever you want. Disabled biopods will pulse shortly before they are reactivated. There's fuck loads to this. This is going to be so hard to remember all this. Disabled biopods will pull shortly before they are reactivated. So when the biopods get disabled, they reactivate after a certain amount of time. Oh, I'd love a hug counter. Holy fuck, man. Memorizing everything is so irritating. Um... Decrease the over-reading range of supply ca uh, cases to 28 meters was 32. Wait, I can't remember. Could you see? Could you see when supply cases were um, were ready to grab? Or is it that you just saw the supply case but you didn't know how ready it were? They were in Y. Ah, okay, okay. So the difference is now it shows you. Okay. And because of that, they've made the meter range a tiny bit lower. Okay. Um, this is still very, very high. You won't notice it. Especially now it tells you which ones are the best ones to go to. So, um, very time efficient. 
Decrease the range of M's to 8 meters was 10. Again, it's very, very minimal. Um, and again, I think it's because of this. Decrease immunity to the slip stream after using an M to 0.35 uh, seconds was 2 seconds. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting. Will you notice that? It's going to take you about one and a half seconds to get it set up. So the the immunity for two seconds or 0 0.5, I don't think you'd notice it. I think it's one of them numbers which ain't going to do anything. Because you're not going to be able to emp them this quick anyway. Oh, sorry, slipstream them this quick anyway, are you? Unless maybe you have the add-on, which... Um, is it an add-on where where the uh, they get infected with one another, or is it passive? Can't remember. Was it passive or an add-on? Was it an add-on? If it was an add-on, let's just say um, that could be good for the add-on. That's about it, though, because I think it's going to take you about two seconds to actually slipstream them anyway. So it is base. The add-on decreases the range, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so so just based off that then. So if someone emps... Yeah, but if you're emping someone, you've broken off anyway. No, I, I think this isn't going to do anything. Uh, this is this is the case of, you know, where they say that, oh, pallet's going to break 0 0.2 seconds quicker. It doesn't do anything. Like, you've seen even with Overclock on Singularity, who breaks the pallet super quick, they still get to another loop. It doesn't do anything. Um... So this isn't going to do anything, I don't think, personally. Uh, M's are the essential tool uh, to play in against Singularity, but they can be too plentiful at times, making it hard for the killer to use their power. Survivors will now uh, need to spend a little more time to acquire M's, and they won't be protected from further slipstreams after using one. It's not really going to do much, though. Uh, use two seconds, now it's no point. Now it's, like, half a second, basically. Like, it's not going to... It's not... I don't, I don't see it really being anything that uh we've added a new um video effect uh to buy a pod to let survivors know when a pod has been disabled and is about to reactivate okay um they've said that they were too plentiful at times but ironically i think this is probably going to make them even more plentiful because now all survivors are going to know whenever they can grab one because it's only going to take them... Like, how long does it take for 3% to to be done at one of the printers? Is it like a second or something stupid? Two seconds at most, maybe? Is it three seconds? They can't do him chase now. Yeah. I guess three seconds. It's it's not, like, crazy, but you know, I, guess, I guess, but... They know which ones are like the ones which are ready, which is huge. I think they're still going to be quite plentiful, but yeah, whatever. This this thing's just strange, though. Um, this they won't be protected from further slipstreams after using one. I mean, you've gone from two seconds to zero point three five. Like this is just mean. Like yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Um. Reduce the time it takes to switch back to the singularity to 0 0.5 seconds with one second. That's good. Uh, reduce the time it takes to switch back to the singularity when hooked near a survivor to 1.5 seconds was five. Weird. Weird. So... Hmm. Okay. I thought the whole point of this is they wanted to decentivize the camping part, but I guess, yeah, only 0 0.5 seconds. I don't know. That is weird, yeah. In my opinion, that just incentivizes camping, no? Or at least staying around hooks longer. I don't know. The devs confuse me with what they actually want in the game. Um, since the introduction of anti phase camp system, this penalty became a little redundant as staying near the hook. Oh, okay, they were explaining it. Um, little, little redundant, staying near a hook survivor now carries its own risks. We reduce this penalty through accessing biopods next to a hook survivor. 
So um, still may not be ideal. Uh, also reduce the base wake up time to make swapping back to singularity feel more responsive. Okay. And then updated various add-ons. Obviously, because they've added some of this stuff, they're nerfing um, Soma Photo, it's called. They won't say that, but it's obvious. All right, cool. Um, so they've made him very brain dead. They've definitely been thinking once again about completely new players, especially console players. Um, a lot of this is in, for them, like, in mind. This isn't for top players. Uh, if anything, they've said, like, these changes won't have a significant effect on those who have already mastered the singularity, see? Like, they don't care about them people. Even though they will, because you've nerfed them. Here. Um, and potentially here. We have to see. That could be a buff. You don't know. Uh, and then the knight is once again kind of brain dead, and he, his whole kind of like... Yeah, he's just... Yeah, he just looks like he's just going to be using Cernifax, really. Just follow the survivor, use Cernifax to break the pallet, walk through the pallet, get a hit, wait for Cernifax, use it on the pallet, walk through the pallet, get the down, and that's it, right? Yeah, skill expression's getting lower and lower. I did say that, um, and that's what happens when you design games around the low level. You do not design balance around low level. That's why most developers don't, and I don't know why people uh, support behaviours aiming for that. I, I don't really get it. I, I guess it's low-level people being happy about it, but whatever. Um, increased uh, aura reveal duration to 8 seconds was 5. Strange. With a longer duration, it'll be easier to take advantage of the aura reveal uh, and allow this perk to be more uh, used more aggressively in chase. In chase? Using darkness revealed in chase? The fuck? I mean, maybe we nurse. That's it. Don't know. But yeah, buff. Uh, ammo ears. Reduced cooldown to 30 seconds was 40. Ammo ears can be very useful, but currently there's a big uh, fail on cooldown. Does it even need a cooldown? Like at all? Reduce the cooldown so the perp comes, comes into play more often. Right. Trail of Torment, uh, reduce the cooldown to 30 seconds was 60. Fucking hell, it was that big. Trail of Torment, uh, similarity has, has long cooldown. We reduced it uh, to allow its effect Karen to be Perks more of often. You're still going to use um, no Unforeseen, it's better though. One that will give a boy true a chance to win. Thanks for all the great <laughs> content. Kiss, kiss. Uh, kiss appreciate it, bang, bang. <laughs> so what, do I have to like ignore when they, when they say meme perks or something? Um, oppression. Ugh. It's better. It's better. This is one perk that I really want them to show some love to because it has potential. Oppression had a very long cooldown, so we've cut it in half. It's still fucking long. But this might be okay. Maybe this is a new meta to look at. I don't know. 40 seconds. Don't know. This, I just still don't get a point of using. Just use fucking... Unforeseen, I don't know. <laughs> Dragon's Grip. Um, reduced cooldown to 40 seconds was 80. Uh, this is not a copy-pasting area. We've done the exact same thing for Dragon's Grip. Okay. They really want killers to use other perks, don't they? But they don't realise the issue is gen speed. Um... Uh, machine learning increased its duration to one minute from 30 seconds. That's a massive jump. Getting machine learning to activate can be tricky. That's true. Barely get it. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, like 30 seconds longer. I don't know. It, it looks looks like it might be all right. Um, but again, getting it to activate is the difficulty. Decrease the start, starting skill check penalty to minus 15 was 25. It's not really going to do anything. Also, that can become very strong with some luck uh, later in the match. But the large penalty, uh, uh, often it means it'll do more harm than good. We'd tone down this penalty to make it a little more consistent and improve its strength once you've built up your tokens. 
So I'm going to do what? Uh, that perk's exact same. You won't even notice it. Um, uh, emp emphatic connection. Is that how you pronounce it? Increased healing speed bonus to 30% was 10. That's three times. Three times more, right? Would you say three times more or two times? Yeah, it's three times. Three times faster. Um, it was useless before. This one. Uh, it's great for showing injured survivors where you are, but the healing speed bonus is a bit low, so we increase the speed at which you heal others to 30%. Okay. Iron Will has gone back to 100%. Iron Will already gave uh, makes survivors fairly quiet, but even the slightest noise can give away your position. We've increased the effects of the perk and reduced the gap between tiers to make uh, lower tiers more useful. Who gives a shit about them? Because um, you're all going to the top. With Iron Will, why did they nerf it? Can anyone remember? Iron, Iron Will will destroy Spirit, yeah. I Like, using Iron Will gives you the advantage over Spirit. You're the power roll. It was used too much. Because they nerfed Strider. Was that it? They nerfed Spirit and Strider, so they nerfed this, but now they just brought it back. Is that what it is? That does ring a bell when you talk about Strider. But we need to look back to exactly when it happened. You still have to be unexhausted to use it. Oh, that's true, right? So it still is it still isn't the strongest. It weren't exhausted, were it? It was um No, it were, weren't it? It was exhausted. Right? So it so it isn't completely back to normal. Resurgence. No. I was thinking of something else. Increased healing uh, granted after being unhooked to 70%. Uh, it's currently a little weak. And since it can only activate twice per match, we increase the healing it grants. Yeah, whatever. It's not going to change much. Increase the healing conversion rate to 70% was 50. So there are take could be tricky to use. Requiring to, uh, you to be injured uh, and find another survivor to heal. Uh, eh. <laughs> They're not too crazy. Increased duration of haste and pools of blood hiding to 30. This is massive change. This is more than three times. Uh, 8, 16, 24. It's almost four times. They, they change the variables so drastically, these devs. Um, So increases the duration of ha haste for fucking 30 seconds. Um, I can't remember how this works. How's Babysitter work? Babysitter's duration was low, causing it not to provide much value before it ran out. We've extended its duration significantly. Yeah, you have, yeah. Nearly four times. Fucking insane. Four, seven percent. Wow. So when you unhook someone, that person you unhook is running at seven percent faster for thirty seconds. Is that what it is? So what do you do end game end game versus that? I guess you hit the person who's trying to go for them. And then go after them or something. God, I don't know. That might be something to look for. It might not. It might be. Uh, this is what you guys spoiled me on, so I'm not going to do like a fake reaction. Um, but it's good, and you know, I'll say uh, hooks that survivors have been sacrificed on will repair themselves after 60 seconds. Should have been in the game years and years and years ago. Literally, what I've been saying. Thank fuck. They're finally doing it. Thank fuck. This really obvious thing, what needed fixing, has finally been fixed. How they thought, and other people, because not many people talked about it, how they thought it was a good idea that once you kill a survivor in a specific location, 
The hook has gone forever, creating a complete dead zone where any survivor can run there and never be hooked again. Like, how, how was that ever a good idea and why did it take so long to get fixed? Let's see what they say. With hooks remaining permanently broken, it would create some dead zones where it was impossible to get a survivor on a hook before they could wiggle free. Yes. Yes. For, for like six years, it was. Yes. Now when a survivor is sacrificed on hook, it will automatically be repaired after 60 seconds. Fucking hell, just mad. Absolutely mad. Good. It's finally done it. Two of my ideas have been put into DVD now. This one. <clears throat> and Billy's uh, sound being lower. That, that's two ideas have actually been implemented. Everything else, no. Complete opposite direction almost. But this, yep. One of my ideas. Finally. We've got two of them in there. Um, map variants. Uh, added, added layout variations to Yam, Yamaoka. I never know how to say that. Uh, and Mount Ormond. Hmm. We've had a new possible layout to each of these three maps. While the layout of these variants are different, they include the same iconic features, landmark decorations. Oh, this is this is uh Hmm, we'll have to keep a, we'll have to have a look at this, especially Mount Ormond. Hmm. East Wing for Ormond. Hmm. Uh, and there you go. That were the patch notes. I don't know when it's out, but we're playing Elden Ring tomorrow, so. <laughs> but there you go. You want me to check it? I'll give you my takes on it, like always. Unfiltered, exactly what I think. Um...